Hi folks, Navid here from Edinburgh Endodontist. Welcome back. Today we will cover the final episode, uh, if you like, of the fracture injuries. Uh, if you have not watched any of the previous clips, I suggest you watch them from Infractions, which is number one in the list to recap. Today we will finish the fracture injuries. Uh, then I will give you a week break and we will cover the luxations in the following week. Today is all about alveolar fracture injuries. These are the injuries that involve the alveolar bone, which may extend across several teeth. Uh, they are probably the scariest to see, but in a way relatively simple to manage and very satisfying to treat. Uh, clinical findings include segment mobility with several teeth moving together. Um, you typically hold one tooth and gently move it back and forth and observe the entire segment uh, moving. Changes in occlusion due to misalignment and movement of the fractured alveolar segments and generally association with luxation injuries such as avulsions and lateral uh, luxations are part of the clinical findings. But please note that we are talking about alveolar fractures here, which is the fracture of the alveolar process the bone surrounding the supporting uh, surrounding and supporting the roots. It is not a jaw fracture or a Lefort type injury. So make sure you complete your systematic examination. Check for other signs such as buccal sulcus bruising beneath the zygomatic arch, uh, for example, or bleeding from the wisdom teeth it may suggest um, uh, the angle of the mandible fracture, check for orbital bruising, check for depression of zygoma, uh, check the nose, the nasal bridge, facial asymmetry, anything suspicious, send the patient to MaxFax. Look for bleeding, for example, uh, from the nose, ears, ask if the, there was any loss of consciousness or if the patient uh, is disorientated, if in any doubt, sent to MaxFax. Um, what we are discussing here is alveolar process fracture uh, in the absence of all the other signs mentioned. But your standard assessment remains the same for all types of dental trauma. Um, take multiple angle radiographs and OPG for an overall assessment. Uh, you can then check the position and course of the fracture, which is a radiolucent line or lines between or over the roots and could be vertical or horizontal. These lines could be at any level from the marginal bone to the root apex to be classed as. Um, alveolar fracture. Anything beyond this is a max fracture. Management in both dentitions involve repositioning the segment under local anesthetic and splinting using a flexible splint for four weeks. So it is a flexible splint. Identify the teeth outside the fractured segment, so the bits that don't move, and use a splinting technique that we discussed in root fractures uh, to, to provide this, uh, the flexible splint. Visit Dental Trauma UK site, the members area, to watch the video on this splinting. A tip for repositioning of a fractured alveolar uh, process just imagine what we are talking about, a fracture of alveolar process from the marginal bone to the root apices. Now, when this happens and the segment gets displayed, the root apices are usually locked outside of the socket. So they may be mobile, but by just pushing, they will not go back to where they came from, right? So what you need to do is to disengage the segment, to unlock the roots by slightly pulling the segment. And as you do so, the soft tissues usually pull the segment back to where it came from. 
So you need to be gentle, but strong to do that. It needs a bit of you know, digital manipulation. Generally speaking, imagine this, the segment is fractured, the roots are out of the socket, locked usually in the buccal aspect. You pull to disengage and then let go gently to reposition back to where the segment has come from and where the root ends actually used to be. So back into the socket. Then monitor until exfoliation in primary teeth, uh, but after four weeks you remove the splint obviously. Uh, four weeks, three, six, 12 months, and annually in permanent teeth. In both dentition, as I said, you know, make sure you remove the splint in four weeks' time um, and carry out your uh, reviews and follow ups doing your clinical and radiographic examination. Okay, well done. Um, you've made it to the end of the fracture injuries. I'm just going to sum up what we have covered this week. Uh, we discussed infractions uh, on day one for which you just reassure the patient and uh, monitor in a year. Then enamel fractures, uh, which you smooth, reattach or build up and monitor in a year. We discuss enamel dentin fractures, uh, for which you just need to reattach, build up, or if you don't have any time, bandage with GIC and review in three, six, and 12 months, and then annually, generally for five years. We then covered enamel dentin pulp fractures, in which you do pulpotomy and restore and review in three, six, and 12 months. So you either, uh, if you've got the segment and piece, you try to reattach it, if not, you build up. We then moved to root fractures and talked about repositioning and splinting. It was the first time we talked about splinting. Um, and remember, no root canal treatment is required as a first uh, sort of a treatment. Uh, review in four weeks to remove the splint, if it is a flexible one, and then three, six, 12 months and then annually for five years. And remember the uh, cervical fractures uh, need splinting for a longer period and need a rigid splint. Yesterday we covered crown root fractures with or without pulp exposure. So depending on the severity, you either reattach and uh, review or do pulpotomy or root canal treatment or extract. This was the first time we included root canal as the first line of treatment. Finally, alveolar fractures that you reposition and splint and review as above. Just to recap on splinting, so you need four weeks for alveolar fractures and apical and mid third root fractures and four months rigid for cervical root fractures, cervical third root fractures. Thank you very much, folks, uh, for watching this series of clips. Uh, come back next week for luxation injuries. So I'll give you a few uh, days break, and then we cover the luxation injuries. And please visit the Dental Trauma UK uh, members area for the video clips on repositioning and splinting. Stay safe, take care, and goodbye.